is a record. First ball. Philippe Chatry, in the right of your picture, the president of the French Tennis Federation, Mr. Samarance, who's the head of the Olympic Committee next to him. Of course, Philippe Chatry is on the Olympic Committee as well. And I know they're looking for a big, big time in Barcelona later this summer. Well, a pretty confident start in his opening game for the defending champion, 40 Love. Corder said he was just going to go out there and relax, try and enjoy himself. He's obviously going to be very nervous, his first appearance in a Grand Slam final. That Korea. one's long, so Korea holds his opening service game to love and leads it one game to love. Quarter to serve, his opening game. It's been a thrill to bring you nine days of live coverage on Nine's Wide World of Sports. This is the number one clay court tournament in the world, one of the four Grand Slams. And it doesn't matter whether you win the singles, the doubles, or the mixed doubles. Any Grand Slam title is one that you like to have in your resume at the end of your career. All. So talking about Grand Slam titles, Todd Woodbridge scored one yesterday in the mixed doubles here with Arantxa Sanchez Vicario. They defeated Laurie McNeil and Brian Shelton of the United States 6-2, 6-2. So that's a couple of Grand Slam titles for Woody this year, winning the Australian doubles with Mark Woodford. The ladies' doubles went to Gigi Fernandez and Natalie Zvereva with a win over Sanchez Vicario and Martinez. Six three six two. Courier's played uh, 18 matches against left-handers, and he's won 17 of them. So obviously they don't bother him. Francois Joffre, who does a little bit of television commentary for one of the French networks, and also a semi-finalist, I believe, here in our days, a long while ago. But of course, a member of the French Davis Cup team for a number of years.
this is what Nuke and I were talking about. This young fella has great strokes off the ground, and he can hit them hard. It's just a matter of how many opportunities he's going to get to do that in this match. But he can trade him. He's a very streaky player, as you saw in his match with Leconte, that he doesn't mind somebody trying to slug it with him. Game point. And he comes up with an ace. So he's pumped up early in the match. One game all. First set. Best of five sets. No tiebreaker in the fifth set if they get that far. Just long. That was a pretty good shot. Hit very crisply, wasn't it? Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, obviously, but that might be a, a tactic, a plan they've worked out to try to take advantage of the courier's second serve, try to put pressure on him immediately. I don't know how easy that's going to be. confident point from quarter so he's not lacking in that department because in the first point in that game he chipped and charged and this is a good approach we well, stabs at this volley it ends up being a drop Can't volley say. I don't think that's what he had in mind that's just the way it worked out but he does a great job here courier didn't get his ball low enough it was too high and it made it a little easier job for quarter but still quick reactions good hands 15 all Korea wins this final. He's the first player since Mats Wielander in 88 to take a two-step lead on the Grand Slam, winning the first two Grand Slams of the year. Wielander did that in 88. No player since Rod Laver won his second Grand Slam in 69 has won three consecutive Grand Slam tournaments. Well, obviously, obviously nobody's won four either. But this is a good start for Korea if he can get through this one. a good play from Corder. He's saying to Curry, well, I'm, my game plan at the moment is to attack you and you're going to have to come up with the winners. So players like Agassi were not able to do that. Even Izovic could behind a big serve. But I don't think his ground strokes are as penetrating as Peter Corder's. Oh. Missed it. Well, a break point opportunity now for Corder. has been pretty good the two weeks of the tournament when he's been down break point he's been able to come up with a big shot you see where quarter was he was about seven or eight meters behind the baseline trying to trying to make that passing shot pretty hard to do of course you need that much time to track down the ball that courier hits when you're on the defensive well, talk about power That's got to be his favorite shot, the off forehand. He can hit it either direction, but that one has the most pace on it. When he pulls it down the line, he has more topspin. That one really travels. 
Safari, sometimes he hits it inside the service box, doesn't he? He gets a real good yeah. angle. Does yeah, and he hits it flat. You wouldn't think he can handle that. Well, Check Sydney or the bush off that one. He had no chance of making that shot. So Courier hole serve after being down a break point, and he leads well, it two games to one. If you've pulled your trapezius, strained your latissimus dorsi. Quarter serving, down 2-1, opening set. Oh! Courier's got a 22 match winning streak going at the moment, which exceeds the 21 matches held last year by a couple of the boys on the tour, Stefan Edberg and Ivan Lendl. The longest winning streak, 46 matches back in 1977 by the great clay quarter Guillermo Vilas and obviously they're all played on clay but the game has changed a lot since then this is a really good play by quarter when he hits this back in watch where it lands in Cura's court in the corner of the service box, that takes your opponent way farther out of court. If you go real deep with the same shot, Curry has no problem getting to it. Obviously, there is a game plan that has been set oh, by this man with his coach, Zednik, and that's to keep things mixed up. And don't let Jim Curry have a look at the same shot too many times as we welcome our viewers in Adelaide to this year's final and just Got underway. Him. Play has been in progress for 15 minutes and Jim Courier is leading two games to one but he was down break point in his last service game. Peter Corder showing no signs of nerves at the moment and playing some good tennis. So quarter. So Confident fashion here. Whole serve. It's two all. That was uh, following the second serve into the net, and I, I don't know that you can do that uh, very often against the uh, Courier and get away with it. I don't believe you can, but it's a surprise tactic Good. that I think has uh, kept Courier off guard at this early stage of the match anyway. Also 40 loves, a good yeah. time to do it. Peter Cordes has been on the centre court just once this tournament. That was against Henri Leconte in the singles. He was he allowed practice 15 minutes in the morning prior to that because he played all his matches out on court one or the back courts. His quarterfinal match was played out on court one because of bad weather. Oh! However, he has been on centre stage once they lost in the finals of the doubles. He and Goran Ivanovic, they were the runners up here a couple of years ago. Playing out here against LeConte would, would get you settled down yeah. pretty quick if you get through that one. Everybody is in shock here at the moment because this man has got the slightly the better of it at the moment. Coming in from a very deep position, he was right on the baseline, but he made such a good approach. Courier did a good job just to get to that, but obviously that part was real simple. Look where he is on the baseline. And if we can see, no, we don't get to see where it lands, but look how close to the net he was able to get. Thirty-one. 
Czechs have won this championship seven times. Lendl three times, Jan Kodesh twice, and a man that played in Tony's era, Yaroslav Drobny, twice. Oh, what a get from Korea. A lot of people wouldn't have chased that one. No, it's the one thing to get to it. It's something else to make a shot once you get there. A lot of people are fast enough to get the racket on it. Now, Kura is way behind the baseline. He gets to this as quickly as he can, but watch the shot. The racket's ready, short motion, angles it for a winner. Tremendous play. And what point? 40-30 now instead of being down break point. Court has got him thinking. Mixing his shots up very well. Point. Jim Courier still struggling on serve, but holds on there. Three games to two. He leads first set. They found something dangerous. Just to put this in perspective, Quarter's best result previous to this in a Grand Slam was a third round loss at 1988 Wimbledon to Australia's Simon Yule. Six four seven six six love. That's the trophy they'd be playing for. And that will be presented by Rene Lacoste and Jean Barotra, the two two of the four musketeers who are still with us. I know Jean Barotra is in his nineties and Rene Lacoste is either in his late eighties or early nineties and Two fabulous gentlemen, obviously great players, and, and just make up so much the history of our game. That is uh, Jean Barotra right there. Thirty fifteen. This is quarter's eighth career final, and in finals he has a two and five record. And this is his third clay court final, and he has yet to win a title on clay. So when he's got to the final, he has lost on clay pretty much every time. I think that's one of the things that Corder would have to guard against is to try to go for winners too quickly, because that's the way Courier plays. But I think he likes to rally a little bit more and set up his points he tries to go right off the bat, he might start making some errors. Well, he is a streaky player, as we've mentioned. He can tee off and hit winners, but then suddenly, for three games, the ball will be all over the court. And now this is the first break point opportunity for Courier. Went for the big serve down in the middle. Was successful. He's done that on two big points. Yeah, I'd call him sneaky fast on the first serve. I think with the radar gun, he wouldn't really be that fast, but he normally spins serves or kicks him in. And then when he goes for the big one and makes it, it sort of seems faster than it might be. Pretty good second serve there. Well, you got Courier standing so far back. That left-handed kick serve in the deuce court really took him out of out of court. If he eventually stands in around that baseline more, he can angle up and take that kick serve before it gets out too wide. So had another one right down the tee. That's where he's been successful. That's the third time he served that big one with a smile on his face there. It's his second ace. And he keeps it even at three games all. And obviously, he looks as though there's a good ploy against Korea, a left-hander, because he always seems to be looking for that two-handed backhand. He's got to stand over that way because of the restricted area that he has. He hits it very close to the body, the backhand. So the, the one down the middle for the forehand could be a big serve for quarter today. Has been so far. Gordon 
Forbes, who is the author of a book, A Handful of Summers. Yannick Noah territory, and you may have heard it and chuckle from the crowd. Ale Yannick. Yannick Noah is doing some television work here this weekend also. Love 30. Nice thing they do with the ball kids here, Tony. Uh, every year for the finals, the men's final, they line the ball kids up behind that first row of boxes there at the far end from where we're doing, Jim, far end from where Jim Curry is serving. And let those young kids, who are a lot of them aspiring young tennis players, watch their superstars, watch the boys play. Yeah, they do a lot of work uh, this two week period and, and uh, do a wonderful job. Here they are there just at the back of the court in their green shirts, the ball boy, ball kid shirts. And Courier's first ace. Against Tom. 15-30. When you hit a good solid overhead, like Curry did there, and you get it fairly deep, even if your opponent guesses correctly, it's difficult to handle. If you hit it hard but land short in the court, uh, they can oftentimes handle it. S'il vous plaît. Merci. Worked that net court judge up. Yeah, <laughs> sure did. Quarante <laughs> trente. 40-30. I don't think that backhand by Courier was hit that hard, but it was deep. It landed well, several centimeters inside the baseline, and that's always a tough shot for any tennis player to handle. Courier won his opening service game of the match to Love. He's been down Love 30 or 15-30 on uh, the next three, so Quarter is making him think a little. Now that was a good job by quarter to get that ball back cross court because uh, you watch the approach shot by Courier. He hits it hard and pretty deep. Now quarter looks like he's going to be late. And when you're late, you only can go down the line or try to lob, but he ain't able to hook it back cross court. I think that's what caught Courier. Juice now. forehand cross court and again struggles but stays there four games to three he leads first set now i'm in business do you want to see her never thought you'd ask <laughs> and i never thought we'd get there Finally. and it's peter corder down four games to three hasn't played a seeded player to get through to the final Henri leconte was a wild card entry Stefan Edberg fell out of that side of the draw, as did Ivan Lendl. Oh. Tony, the Adelaide viewers have just joined us, and uh, we sent a message a little yeah. earlier. Yeah, I want to just say hi to, to Ellen Wills, who is 81 years of age down in Adelaide, who's still playing tennis a lot, and her husband, John, who teaches kids still. And I understand John's not feeling so well, so we hope he's feeling better. And just want Ellen to know that we had dinner the other night with his, her daughter, Patricia, and oh. husband, Sam. They're well here enjoying the tennis, and we certainly hope you're enjoying it as well.
That's really the first tentative backhand we've seen. He appeared as though he wanted to hit it and halfway through the swing decided, no, I just want to push it. And that's exactly what he did, pushed it halfway up the net. So love 30, a chance now for Courier. Well, that's how quickly things can change. Three break points now for Courier. That was almost a miss hit. A bit of a miss hit by Courier, but it got down low. Yeah, it turned into a good miss hit. Didn't it? Yeah. it just floated down and uh, he had to move very quickly. It wasn't really fast enough to get in on top of it. And he hit it pretty flat, too. So a bit of strife here for Peter Corda. And as Tony just mentioned, lightning strikes quickly in this match as you look at Jose Aguirres on your right and the man with the cap on there is Brad Stein. They look after the coaching duties of the number one player, Jim Courier. Brad Stein was with him, of course, when he won the Australian Open and their pack then was after every match they went for a run along the Yarra and they decided if he was to win it, they would dive in. They did. 5-3 now, Courier leads. He's second ace. These guys make some funny packs. You dive in the Yarra River, or you shave your heads <laughs> when you right. win Davis <laughs> Cup matches. What's wrong to go and have a beer and have a good meal? Well, they, there are not too many of the, uh, the youngsters out there now. Well, Jim Courier does have a couple of beers. Well, let him have a yeah. soft drink. Next thing you know, they'll be bungee cord jumping or something oh, if they win. <laughs> well, that's beautifully played. Corda does that so well because he doesn't take the racket back very very far. He doesn't try to hit it real hard. A very Gets controlled out. stroke. Watch him here now. Early preparation. This one right here. Here comes Courier. Prepares early. Stays down. You see he didn't lift up, lift the knees. The head didn't come up in the yep. air. Keeps that head still, doesn't he? And he, he goes through the ball. And he doesn't try to kill it. You know, not try to hit it 18 miles or 1,800 miles an hour. Just place it well. 15 all. And he's done it again. Hit that one a little harder, but he had to. He measured it well. I don't think Courier got his as deep as he wanted it. Against Holland. Courier's a good volleyer, but that's not uh, his greatest strength. He's not afraid to come into the net. No, he's usually a pretty good volleyer because he comes in behind such good, good approach shots yeah. that the volleying is not as difficult okay. as it might be for Let's others. 15-30. Been on trouble, in trouble on every service game except his opening serve of the match. Showing some emotion now is Corda. Well, as I say, uh, the, the match against Leconte took him a long while before he uh, let it go, but normally he's like this on the court. We've done some matches with him over the past 12 yeah, months. Guy. He won in New Haven, his first match on the tour last year, and he's a pretty emotional guy. And after playing a bad yeah. game in this last service game, to give that opportunity to Korea, he's uh, really fought back well. Two break points now.
Court is going to go and have a look at it. It was called a fault. It must have been wide. I think it hit on the, the service line, but not the center service line. Tory doesn't even question it. Very fair, both these players. Korea misses. Set. Quarter breaks back. Five games Corner. to four. Korea leads. S'il vous plaît, mesdames et messieurs, les joueurs sont prêts. He is now down five four, serving. Zero. Smart shot. Had his opponent way behind the baseline, expecting him just to drill the forehand. Don't have to hit him hard to win. Just got to hit him in the right spot. Oh. Had an old baseball Cancer. player in our country, in our, used to say, hit him where they ain't. <laughs> That's not a bad idea out here, too, is it? It's a hot day today. We haven't had the sun out like this for a week or more. I think that favors one of the other of these players. Not really, but as, as Gouri mentioned in the semi-final match with Agassi, the conditions were very heavy, so the ball didn't come through quite as much. I think it's going to do that a little quicker today because of the conditions. And there's that serve, another one right down the tee, right down the middle. It's his third ace. And they've all come down there from the ones down the middle. You still always have to worry about the wide one from the lefty in the ad court, so if he can do both, he's a tough wait, server. Wait. 40-15. That's game. So you know that Courier is thinking now. He uh, had an opportunity to serve for the first set. Lost it comfortably. It was a good game played by quarter. It's now back to five all. Good shots you have to hit to win a point around here, Fiery. Unbelievable rally from both players, adding the, adding the pace of shot from the baseline. Quarter just finally going for a little bit too much. A little over anxious on that last one. Well, any one of these that you miss, you could say they were going for too much. They were just hitting them so hard. This was a great shot because he's off balance, and look at the depth he got on that one. And this is where he misses it, trying to hit the real big one back down the line. Good point. 15 love. Jim Curry has won four titles so far this year. The Australian Open, Japan Open, Hong Kong, and the Italian Open in Rome. You just see how warm it is here today with the fans, and literally with their fans. Did you say that on purpose? Did I say well on purpose? Fans with their fans? <laughs> That's the second double by Courier.
Just long. long. Yep. Well played volley. Gallant. Fraction deep. 40-15, Korea. Throughout this tournament, uh, Courier's first serve percentage was a 59% for all of his matches up to this final. I don't think he's doing 59% right now, do you? No. Uh, maybe, maybe close to it. So he struggled again, but uh, stays in front as he has done all set. Six games to five, Korea leads. We're surprised at the score and the tennis has been played yeah, to this point. Exactly, as we are. Women's final yesterday, probably one of the Zero best pens. they've had here for many a year. Won by Monica Sellis over Steffi Gruff. A very enthralling three-set match, 10-8 in the third. And they thought this might be a bit of a letdown with the men's final. Courier being a very heavy favourite going into this match. And a couple of errors now when you get to 5-6 in a set. You think, well, I've just got to win this one and we can get it into a tie break. You never know what might happen in a tie breaker situation. But it's love 30 now. That is his second double. And it's now three set points for Courier. Yeah, bad time to serve a double fault, but obviously a little nervous. Although he hasn't shown too much signs of nerves in this first set. Broke a string, Courier. Oh, man. Set point, and that ball just climbed right up yeah. over the tape. He says, you're right. Thank you for a little help there. This is where Courier breaks Can the string on that one, on this forehand here. And uh, he knows that he's got to try and get up there, but that's about the only way that quarter could have won that point. So. Here's another. Watch this ball hit the tape. No, we don't get to see it. Again, we're taking the pictures from our friends in French television, so we only have control as to what pictures you see. Still two set points. Oh, and he missed it. Not a difficult volley. Probably a little off balance when he tried to hit it. So the opening set of this match, as the players get a tremendous round of applause from these tennis fans here, 49 minutes of pretty good action. The first set goes to Jim Courier, seven games to five. Well, we've just got to see if there's a little bit of a letdown from Peter Porter here, the disappointment of losing that first set after breaking back to get to five all. Or whether Jim Courier can really put the pressure on and go on to victory in a hurry. Korda played an awfully good set of tennis. He did uh, miss a couple of forehands in that service game that he lost and then served a double. But his, his standard was awfully good. Maybe it'll be Courier that breathes a sigh of relief that he's won that first set and just uh, lets up a little bit at the start of this second one. Love 30 now. Been down 15-30 or love 30 in most of his service games. Although last one he was pretty much on target, only dropping one point when he served a double fault. Courier, that is.
minutes 30. Just wide. That's a good look at all the uh, lines people there. The fellas in all in the uh, blue shirts. Of course, they're all in uniform and their jackets. And uh, they have to wear the jackets when they're on court. But when they're watching the matches, they're allowed to take them off. It's a very warm day here today. Jim Courier wins the opening game in the second set. He leads it one set and one game to love. It's time for the taste, one number to call. Pizza Haven Pizza's delivered. Said he had a number of chances. Love 30 games on Courier's serve. This is the important part of the match, though, isn't it? After quarter losing that first set and, uh, in a close one, trying to bear down and stay with it in the second set. Love 15. Yes, on the line. I was wondering that the during that first set, a number of rallies, Courier went consistently to Corder's forehand. Uh, his game plan, I wondered if it was to try to break Corder's forehand down. And in the end, at 6-5 in that last, in that first set, Corder's forehand was the thing that broke. Two bad errors to get Love 30 down on serve. He's certainly directing more play to the forehand, isn't he, than to yeah. the backhand side. I think he likes, that's his natural shot, though, I think, with the two hands. Oh, and it goes across, if you remember when he played uh, Ivan Izovic. He played Ivan Izovic's forehand, but probably for the same reason, because it was the Ivan Izovic forehand that uh, the errors came from eventually. 30-15. A good shot from Cordo when he got there. He had plenty of time to do more with it. Have a look at this point where Courier actually finishes up, and you'll see that Corda hits the ball pretty much down the middle of the court. Doesn't get any angle at all. He tried to go for the flick, rather flick top spinner, that rather than the uh, the little dink, the slice angle. Went for more pace. Good lob. Gave that one plenty of air and plenty of topspin. Yep, good topspin lob there. It brings up break point. He's been acing him down the middle yeah. that time he went wide. To his fourth ace. A 
avantage quarter. Interesting tactic there from quarter. For the first time, he served and volleyed on the second serve. He's not frightened to vary no. the, the game up, is he? No, he did that a couple of times in the first set, but uh, very rarely. And uh, as Tony Knight talked about, it's not something that's going to win the match for him, but it's something that can keep Courier guessing a little bit. If he does it too often, then he's going to pay the price. Oh, that double fault he nearly hit Courier on the foot. Lost control of that one completely. It's only his second double fault of the day. Third by our unofficial scorecard here. Avantage court. Rhythmic clapping, which is the way the fans try and get their favourite players into the match over here in Europe. Whether it's France or Germany or Italy, they do it a little bit differently in Italy. More vocal. Courier now playing with very good depth on his ground shots and that's setting him up with these short balls. This is the longest game of the uh, match so far. We've hit juice for the third time. Quarter's only averaging 61% or 62% of first serves into play, um, which is not great for clay court tennis when you're not serving and volleying. No, but he's going for the serve, though. He's trying to uh, let it rip. I think he'd like to have it up around 65-70. Uh, I think he'd be happy with it. He's going for the big serve. As Tony said, It's he serves sneaky fast. It's not something that is going to break any sound barriers on the, the machine but it's up over 100, 110 miles an hour pretty much when he lets it go. Like that one, there's an ace right down the middle again. It's a good time to serve an ace too. Here you go, here That's his fifth ace. Courier's first serve percentage is 70% into play. She held that one well until Courier made the, uh, Porter made the move to cover the down the line backhand. Avantage Courier. See if we can get a look at it on this replay. The volley, now watch Quarter. he'll just make a move to his right. See him there, he's made one step to his right, that opened up the cross court. Break point now for Courier. I thought Courier was going to put up a high lob then, Fred. Yeah, it looked as though he'd run far enough, and that was about the only he shot left for him. So he survives yet another break point. This is a solid volley deep into the corner. You can see Courier, he thought he'd throw one up there, but he hesitated on the backswing. Juice again. Oh. Fourth double fault. And not a very good time to serve it. This is a pretty important game for quarter, isn't it? Yeah. Well, we talked about if Courier could get away in this second set, break it open. Quarter's got to try and fight to stay in there. He survived a couple of break points. This is the third break point opportunity for Courier in this game. then three times he started to come to the net and then backed off hesitated every time didn't he yeah. took two steps forward and then thought no and back paddled here's one of them see him start forward 
Egalité. Didn't go in. It's a pretty good backhand from Porter. Break point down. Juice again. For the sixth time this game. Some very searching rallies down there now. And you have the feeling that if quarter gets broken here, Korea may sprint away from him in this set. Break point. Egan. Come up with some big serves when he's needed them. An ace on one occasion and a couple of heavy first serves deep into the corner to the back end. Back at juice, juice number seven. Oh. Curry has developed a little habit, Fred, of uh, Taking that little walk around the baseline when he's getting set up to receive serve, yeah. and he always tries to keep the serve awaiting. I remember somebody sitting to the right of me that used to do that. Avantage I think point. his name was Newcomb. Game point. Yeah. And after a marvelous battle, he's got the crowd going on his side. Peter Corder unleashes a forehand. One game all, second set. That's a great game he played there. Four game, four, four break points he saves, and then he's not holding back. Like that backhand he hit cross court winner, and then that one there to finish that game, a rifle shot down the line. Yeah, what I liked about that game was that he kept going for his shots. Even though he made some errors and got it into trouble, he kept attacking. And again, he splits the line. Establishing a little bit of his own momentum. Zero cans. I guess this is why uh, Courier was hesitating to come in before. Love 15. Doesn't like the ball, it must have gone flat, must be flat. Oh, oh he's double faulted. Caused him to do a double fault there, serve a double fault. A little bit of lost concentration there between serves, throwing the ball away. Having to get another one, and just one serve left. So now from a very hard fought game on quarter serve, quarter now has a little opening at love 30. Three break points. Chanting is underway, letting Corder know that they want him to break. Oh. Pretty good uh, shot. Courier made there that from yep. that drive of quarters split the baseline. 
He had a look at that, Corey had a look at that spot where it bounced, but was satisfied that it clipped the line. Pretty good four in the last one. It was just wide by about half a metre. Ah. Ace number three. Corey knew as soon as he hit this one where it had gone, you could see he just took the hand off the racket. And just rifled that one down the middle. Most of the aces have come down the middle from both players. Still a break point for quarter though. Crowd whistling now because Courier was taking so much time. He must have gone over the 25 seconds then. There's 25 seconds there left. I think it's 25 seconds now, yeah. It used to be 30, they cut it back. Five. Peter Corder back deep into the backhand corner on three occasions. He breaks serve, now leads at two games to one, second set. They found something dangerous. You're in over your head. In each other. She seduces people. It's part of her game. <sighs> she is screwing with your head, Nick. Korea won the first set 7-5. Corder has just achieved a break in the second set at two games to one. Korea served for the first set at 5-4. Quarter came back. Made some unforced errors at 5-6 down that gave Courier that opening Kansas set. Zero. But he's full of confidence after saving four break points in his last service game. And now he continues to come up with shots like this. Dean Love. That's a great shot. He really gets some angle on that off forehand. You can't move over there to, to cover it because if you do, it'll come back down the line. Get a good look at Corder here. Just holding his position in the middle of the court. 15-30. This is the time to break back. Immediately you've lost your own serve. A little bit of extra concentration is needed to try and get back even. And then a double fault like that helps you along the way. That's his fifth double fault today and brings up two break points for quarter to get back on even terms. He's going to have to cut out those loose points on the, on the important points. They add up over a long match. What do you put that down to, Fred? Just concentration, nerves? Concentration. Well, he's served a few double faults, Nick, but he's also served some aces. I, he's uh, a little bit frustrated, but the ball toss on that one wasn't too good. Uh, very low because he, uh, most of his doubles uh, have been into the net. The one before he hit on the frame, but that last one was a very low ball toss. It looked like uh, from the early part of that game, he just lost the plot completely.
Not that bad. Another well played point. Well, we've mentioned the fact that this is his first Grand Slam final, and uh, he hasn't had the experience that this man Jim Courier has had Seven out there years. under the pressures of playing a final. And he is a streaky player. He, he, he comes up with a lot of winners. And as you mentioned, the forehand was broken down. There was no reason for those unforced errors at 5-6 on the forehand that really cost him that first set. And then two double faults in that last game. So just a few points here and there, as you said, adds up and makes the difference. Oh, that's a super lob. Gee, that fooled him completely. Guns up. Didn't look as if it was that high, this lob. See him change his grip, though. He's got to go way round to that other grip for him to play that slice backhand. His regular two-handed backhand grip is way round like a baseball swing. Quarter going to get some stringerlings. They put those little plastic gadgets underneath the string so that the string holds firm and doesn't move around with the top spin and with the clay, the dirt off the felt of the ball gets onto the strings. That's just a precaution to try and save them for a little while. Kind of surprised that he went over to adjust his strings at 15 all. Tom I think he would have had more things on his mind. There must have been a string that he thought was going to break. Number four. Wait, please. Wait, please. Wait, please. Wait, please. Wait, please. Wait, please. Another one on the line. Sorry, one thing with Courier, you just feel that when he's in trouble, he digs a little deeper as he did then. Three games to two, he leads second set. Yet, Jim Courier, I wouldn't say fortunate to win the first set, but he had a couple of things go his way. They're on serve in the second now, having exchanged service breaks. Quarter broke Courier to lead 2-1. Courier broke right back. Not many flat forehands around on the circuit like uh, like uh, quarters. Day is there with a... No, he's pretty conventional, isn't he? The way he plays the game, not with uh, he can hit it with topspin, but uh, doesn't hit with that excessive topspin that somebody like Curry uses on some shots or. Call it long. It's the only tournament in the world where they're allowed to ask the Lions people to get up and check the marks. <laughs> Let out a cry as he went up for that. He looks as if he's, you know, just got everything under control, quarter, the way he walks around the court and all that, but there's a lot of emotion here, and um, when he goes up for this smash, he let out a cry. Got up pretty well, too. Looks like he's a pretty good uh, all-round athlete. Fred, I was watching him a while ago kicking a tennis ball around. Yeah, well, they all play soccer over here, don't they? They love to do that. Just thinking when you said that he plays more a conventional way. Conventional way is going to be probably in a few years' time will be like Courier. 
be unconventional to hit the ball flat. Been unconventional hit the ball oh, flat oh, oh. for about the last 15, 20 years. We haven't had too many players come through. Sampras is probably as close as you get to it, but you watch him play on clay and it's every top spin. Edberg's about the only one you can think of. He's still got that continental forehand, Edberg. There's not too many of those around. 30 all. Well, he's got to be thinking about this serve now. It's going to drive him crazy, quite frankly, as he bounces the racket. He knows he's letting opportunity slip away here. In most departments, he has been equal to the task with Jim Courier, except serving, Nick. Serving and a, and a few unforced errors, but they're probably caused because he is going for his shots a lot. Just like oh, yeah. that, ball got up a little high and he tried to overplay it. So Courier breaks serve again. Courier set, set four games to two, second set, and Courier leads it one set to love. And Fred, it looks like Court is allowing himself to get a little bit frustrated down there, talking to himself. He whipped his headband yeah. off and threw it up to his chair. Uh, just the maybe the, the occasion starting to get to his nerves a little bit. S'il vous plaît. Merci. 15 0. This was a good lob that uh, Corder played here. Courier not looking for it, and he really did well to get back to it. Hit it with a lot of power, too. 15 love. 30 is it? The uh, courier really has this uh, mental thing of focusing on what he's doing down, doesn't he? he? Walks around, looks at the ground, has a routine for everything. Well, it's the old cliche. He plays at one point at a time. I'm not worried about results. I'm just worried about winning tennis matches, and he puts the Grand Slam titles above anything else. I think you were saying it the other day how he used to be a, a little bit more irritable on court yeah. and rush around a little bit more. That's where Hagaris has, has helped him. 40-15. So an easy game there for Jim Courier. He now extends that lead. Five games to two, second set. Leads at one set to love. Service break. Leads 5-2. Don't forget our next stop is the big one at Wimbledon in two weeks' time where we bring you many hours of live coverage over the two weeks of the championships.
nice angle there from Curry. He didn't try to do too much with it. He knew quarter was way off court. Zelkas. Interesting looking forward to Wimbledon. Nick, as we have a look at this replay, if Corder wins this, I mean, if Courier wins this, he's got two legs on the Grand Slam. He's won the US Open. He was a quarter finalist at Wimbledon last year. Do you think he has any chance on the grass of, of winning the title? I wouldn't write him off with anything, the way he's uh, so mentally um, dedicated to his task. Wimbledon will be the toughest of the, always the toughest of the four for him, but uh, he can play on grass, no doubt about it. He got through to the quarters there last year. Yeah, he just uh, has to change his grips a long way around to make the volley. He's conscious of that fact. But if you return serve the way he does, sometimes you don't have to make any volleys. Have a look at quarter here. He sort of goes over on the ankle. The other day, you may remember against Henri Leconte, that same thing happened. He does tape his ankles. So there is a weakness there. Tapes his ankles before play every day. When you talk about Courier winning Wimbledon, you, I, I, I go back to Bjorn Borg. Uh, I think you were one of the ones, along with me, that said, well, See, Borg may win out. one Wimbledon, but uh, he'll win lots of French championships, but not that many Wimbledons. No. He won five in he a row. five in a row, exactly. Courier threads the needle down the line, so it is now three set points for two sets to love lead. Somebody else that's in line possibly for a Grand Slam and didn't play there last year is our women's yeah, champion here, that. Monica Sellis, having won the Australian, won here. She withdrew from Wimbledon last year under mysterious circumstances. But she's there this year, got to be given a chance. And that's the second set to Jim Courier in one hour and 29 minutes of play. The number one seed and defending champion who came on court today as a very heavy favourite leads it two sets to love, 7-5-6-2. The winner takes home just under 500,000 US dollars. The runner-up, half that. Get the ball away, one after another. Looked at the finish here like Courier was going to finally win the point. That's the first one. He never hit it in the middle of the racket. Thought he had this one, realised that Courier was going to get to it easily and was able to recover. This is where Corder really has to be concentrated. Play it point by point. Try to get the early break. And they're the shots that we've been talking about. And he's doing them at the wrong times too, on very important points. You can look back on a, on a set at a standard like this in a Grand Slam final and you can see how unforced errors really add up. Polite applause for Courier. The crowd now resigned to the fact that at two sets to love, something monumental has to happen for quarter to get back into this match. 30-15. 
fascinating, isn't it? That quarter broke serve to go ahead 2-1 in the second set and has not won a game since. Lost five games in a row after he broke and was all charged up. 40-15. Sun is shining, but the top of your screen, you can see some dark clouds hovering around. There's only a couple of them there. They shouldn't be a threat, but you never can tell. The weather's been so unpredictable here. But he missed the easy one. So Courier wins the opening game of the third set. This match, and he's starting to discourage court a little bit. And I think the double faults that Court has served have really taken him down a notch. What would you advise Porter at this stage of the match, Tony? Well, I think he, you know, he played his best set the first set when he was going for his shots and was attacking some. And all of a sudden, he's tried to go for some shots, uh, but from more difficult uh, positions. So I think he's got to just try to sort of move Curry around some, and and you know, wait for a decent try, then go for it. Courier saw him coming in. She's reacting well out there, Courier. Well, he's so solid. You know, he's solid. His game is solid. His head is solid. His insides are solid. He's, he's a, got a lot of courage, tough to turn off. And eventually the other players say, geez, this guy's uh, like playing against a brick wall. And they get a little discouraged. Shot, set himself terrifically for that. Curry's approach shot's not real deep here, and I think he thought, well, I just get a cross court and I'll be okay, Nuke. Yeah, let's have a look at Corder, though, the way he sets himself for this backhand. Steps, took a little jump step there before he got to the ball, so he'd be perfectly set. Curry's approach landed inside the service line, so it didn't have any bite to it. Good attack here, that's good, good four in there, and Creer just trying to get the ball down if he could, but Corder played it wisely, closed in quickly, and now it's 40-15, trying to level it one all in the third set. Great disguise that time by Corder. Boy, it took about two fractions before Curry got off the baseline, didn't it, Nuke? It was a great shot, and he also does good drop shots off the forehand side, which you hardly see anybody doing these days because of their grip. Well, he normally, when he, he does it on the forehand side, he's got you pretty much in position. He's got a sitter. But that one was really beautifully disguised. But you're right, he does it on both sides. Yep, he's got all the shots, Corder. Courier ran off six games in a row before Corda held his last serve.
Yeah, you look back to that 2-1 game in the second set when Corder had the break. He, he was down 15-30 and he double folded twice in a row. And from that moment on, he just sort of fell to pieces for a while. Yeah, and that was after he was down break points on his serve and got out of it and then broke Courier, so it looked like the momentum might be swinging a little bit. Much more emotion today out of Peter Corder than we did in his match against LeConte. <laughs> Terrific returns this game by Corda. Courier makes a good serve and it comes back faster. Tom, Tom. court starts to get a little bit slipperier with the sun out as this match goes on and the clay dries up a little bit so footing becomes a little more difficult so courier holds and leads two games to one in the third set and he's won the first two That is the eighth double fault by Corda. Perhaps you can attribute part of that to the fine return of Jim Courier. On the other hand, maybe it's just nerves, but it certainly hurt Corda's chances. Perfect. Right on the sideline. Those double faults are, are really strange. It's like he just quits on the Gansel. with the racket action. That's a beautiful touch. You're not going to see a better drop volley than that. Didn't put a heck of a lot of underspin on this, too, I don't think. See how the racket head dropped backwards as the ball struck it? Took all the pace off the ball. 30-15. Courier doing his little walk around the baseline again, keeping the server waiting. Trying to compensate for rolling over the top of that serve and hit it in the net. This one he hits long, so it's the ninth double, and it's deuce. Well, those two double faults. Adding up now. Curie has got a break point. This 
Foley just going over the baseline. When he stretches for that forehand volley, sometimes court hits it flat, and that's when it flies on him. Well, it appears, Tony, that everything's going along fine, and he has these lapses in concentration. Well, I agree with you, Nuke, but then again, I don't think you can play tennis on a clay court and keep going for winners all the time. I mean, that when he's on the run, it's, it's asking an awful lot. You make a lot of them if you're a good player, gifted, but I don't think you can do it enough against a good, solid player. I think you just have to wait a little bit more Did before you, you try to go for your game? shot. Then it's not as much of a gamble. So with a break, Courier is serving now at 3-1 in the third. Missed it wide. Perfect volleying position. That's too bad. I feel sorry for Court a little bit because you feel like things are slipping away. And, and he's, he's uh, doing the very best he can. That was just an unfortunate error on his part. Nuke, we've all been there. Playing in big matches where you don't play as well as you'd like or things don't go as well as you'd like. I don't know whether Curry did it on purpose, but he got that ball down awfully low. I don't know if he knew Corda was coming, or this just happens to be the way he hit the ball, but it ended up being a tough volley. He is really a big wall out there, Curry. And on all the key points, he plays so tough. volley routine that's no. answering our question about Wimbledon I guess well it's, it's not going to be a serve and volley so much I think it's going to be how well he can return when the ball's scooting through on him a little bit lower here he comes in here and wrong foots Corda good solid play mix it up a little bit so it's 40 love Almost a sort of a surprise when he makes an unforced error like that. A little bit like watching Sellis yesterday. When she makes an unforced error, it's a bit of a shock. I'm not so sure a Curry would have played that point that way if it had been Deuce or something. But at 40 love, it, he thought it was worth the gamble. Just wide. Well, this is obviously a game Courier doesn't want to get away from him here. 40 love lead. He's got a break. He wants to move that 4 1 lead and open up a little gap. And he's just taking a little extra time at the back of the court. Took a walk right up the back to get the balls. Steadying himself down, trying to close out the game. Courier does hold his serve. He now leads four games to one in the third set. His coach. Courier's task at this stage is to hold two more serves, and he will be the 92 French Open champion. Oh, 
Fantasia. In previous matches, the uh, Courier's had some difficulty with controlling his shots when the balls are new. He normally strikes the ball long for a couple of points because they are a little lighter. That's not what either player had in mind, I don't think. Courier trying to loop, loop that ball and get it much deeper. Tompkins. Trying to drive himself, find something extra. I think he needs to come in a little bit more. That's worked for him the first set. This one, he guesses correctly and lunges and makes a volley into the open court. If I could whisper to him at this stage court, I'd say, you got to attack a little more. Just take your chances because what you're doing now isn't working. Silence, s'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Wide. Pretty risky he shot. He's pretty frustrated right now. Yep. Well, that was a low ball. It was near the net, and he, had to, he went over the high part of the net. As you said before, Tony, not working the point enough, trying for the winner too early. Now another break point, first in this game for Courier, but boy, this could really pretty much be the concluder. This would give the defending champion, Jim Courier, a break. He'd be serving through match at 5-1. Courier. Courier has achieved another break and will be serving for the match at 5-1. The second serve, Courier pulled this one at, with a good angle. See, taking quarter out of court. And I guess he figured he couldn't get back if he went cross court. So he tried to hit a winner down the line to no avail. And so the number Tout one seed, the number one player possible. in the world, is serving Merci. for the French Open Championship. S'il vous plaît. Relentless pressure by Courier. He can defend. He's very consistent. He can attack. Must be a very, very difficult player to play against. And maybe that's why he's the best player in the world at the moment. Silence. 
ace number six by Courier. He has served three doubles. Corda has served five Tom aces Holmes. and nine doubles. What a difference 12 months make, makes. Courier came into the final here last year with Agassi the favorite. He just blew him away in the semifinals this year. Everyone was a bit surprised that Courier won in five sets last year. First serve, tick the net. Perfect. And that ace takes Courier to two match points. I don't believe that Corda thinks that was out or he'd still be arguing about it. Donkeys. Two match points Silence, for the defending champion. But. Silence, s'il vous plaît, mesdames et messieurs, s'il vous plaît. Je, c'était match Coréen. Trois manches à zéro, sept, cinq, six, deux, six, un. In one hour in 59 minutes Jim Courier the number one seed has defended his title here and has won the 1992 French Open 756261 over Peter Corda and Fred Stolle has joined us now and fire your thoughts on the match please pretty impressive performance from Courier uh, as he laces off my way a little bit more but I'm very pleased obviously two times for you Monica three times so rendezvous for next year anytime you know it's not too bad <laughs> what you will say to the public you like it uh, i'll say something nice i'm sure thank you james thank okay. you very much well, This should be equally equally as loud for a fine young man. Alors, d'abord, je voudrais dire un grand merci pour tous les gens qui attendent, le, regardent les, les tournois cette année. C'est très gentil, merci. Alors, oui. Aussi, je voudrais dire un grand merci pour tous les ramasseurs de balles, les juges d'arbitre. Euh, Excusez-moi, je parle comme un vache espagnol, mais... Euh... <laughs> L'année prochaine, peut-être. Okay. All right, that's enough in the French. I'm trying, I'm trying. Well, first off, I'd like to, to congratulate Peter on a great week, um, making it to the finals. Um, you know, it's a good effort every time. I know I've been on the losing side of the coin many times, and uh, you know, he's a, he's a great player, and, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot of him in the, in the future. We already have seen a lot of him this week, so congratulations to Peter.
And just briefly, I'd like to thank uh, Jose Garris, Brad Stein, my two coaches. I'm kind of a little bit weird, but they uh, they've got the job done for me, and they, they keep me pointing in the right direction week in and week out, and I appreciate it. And lastly, just uh, hi to my parents back home. Thanks. I would like to congratulate Jim, you know, he deserved today. He played much better than to me. I hope so next time it's gonna be different. <laughs> I'd like to thank also to my coach Vladimir Zelnik and to my girlfriend, you know, which support me very well this week. Also to my parents, hi at home, and also to the public, they were great. Sorry, maybe next time I play better. Jim Courier, a salute to the repeat champion, Jim Courier, and also to Peter Corder for a wonderful effort. Uh, a great term, certainly Corda has nothing to be ashamed of. It was not his choosing that none of the seated players got through in his half the draw, but he played awfully well to get here. He did a good job in the final. I think he played a better tennis player, and the results were 7-5, 6-2, 6-1 in Jim Courier's favor. So Jim Courier, as Monica Sellis, won the Australian and the French and now have a chance to go to Wimbledon and win there and try to win the Grand Slam, a feat that's done very, very seldom in our sport of tennis. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more in just a moment. I have nothing to hide.